Season 11 has been out for a few days now, and this is probably a little bit earlier than I would normally do this kind of video, but I feel pretty good about it. So let's talk First Impressions Season 11. The story starts with Anna Bray running some simulations of the pyramid ships against what I assume to be Earth with Rasputin. However, the simulation goes poorly, it looks like, and Rasputin literally just nopes out of existence. Need to see if Rasputin pops back into the world again later in the season, or if he's just done after blowing up the Almighty. We did need Rasputin to blow up the Almighty, so last season wasn't a complete loss, but if Rasputin just shuts down right now after all of that, mm, I think that's pretty weak. I don't feel like Bungie will completely ditch Rasputin, but at this point, who really knows? We start the season at Io, with a pyramid ship just staring us right in the face as we complete the mission we're immediately thrown into, seeing signs of Savathun everywhere. Eris has gotten herself into trouble again, and we need to go rescue her again by getting sucked into the pyramid ship, so no real surprises there. Ultimately, we find her at the Tree of Silver Wings in the Cradle on Io, which grew at the final place the Light of the Traveler touched. Eris thinks that the pyramid ships were drawn to it, which is why she went to investigate. Zavala, in his normal Zavala ways, tries to get Eris to not do what she's doing, but imagine listening to Zavala. Then, in his not normal Zavala ways, tells you to watch after her and help her should the need arise. I thought this was a great way to start the season on day one. New territory, new geometry on Io, couple of missions. Already, we are in much more interesting territory than we were at the start of season 10. We are finally starting to push into the bigger picture. We are pushing into the good plot stuff. There doesn't appear to be some other lesser thing in play. We are setting up for the events of Season 12, the start of the next era of Destiny, as it's been called. While we don't have a very direct threat, other than the pyramid ships just sort of farting on Io, I'm much more invested in what their potential story will be compared to that of the Red Legions. This season is all about keeping the leaking darkness from the pyramid ships contained. Eris thinks that we can use the darkness to charge the Seed of Silver Wings, aka your seasonal artifact. It seems that every week we complete the Interference mission, we'll get a chapter of a new lore book of Eris's findings, expanding upon what the Pyramid Ships are trying to tell us. The seasonal gameplay loop is Gambit, the public event, aka Contact. Now, I'm not exactly sure that the seasonal activity is Gambit, but it's a public event, is the best optic for the game after Season 10. That being said, people do seem to like it more than the Season 10 public event, probably because it's a bit simpler to understand. Bank moats, kill stuff. Oh, the bloom things? Yeah, you just bank those too. There's no downtime throwing the balls, there's no waiting near plates, Umbral engrams dropping means the loot is always valuable, lots of enemies to kill. But given that it's a non-match made thing, again, we'll have to see what things are like down the road as people potentially tune out of the season. Umbral engrams are how you will be rewarded. In an attempt to bring more player agency to the game, you're able to upgrade these engrams to filter down the potential items in the engram pool to what you want, ranging from specific weapons to armor stat rolls. Umbral engrams also drop everywhere, not just from the public event, which is nice. The majority of the stuff in the engrams, though, is just stuff from seasons 8, 9, and 10. Fortunately, Season 11's offerings of legendary versions of Destiny 1 Exotic Swords Bolt Caster and Dark Drinker, aka Temptation's Hook and Falling Guillotine, are appealing enough to potentially overlook this fact, given how much people loved these weapons back in Destiny 1. Some of the Season 11 mods are also pretty strong, one playing into sword usage as well, and swords have been very good since their adjustments a while back, further overlooking this fact. Plus, being able to chase specific armor rolls 
is really nice too, at least once you level up high enough. This is in comparison to Season 10's gear offerings, which gave almost zero player agency. This is definitely part of the reason as to why many are enjoying the start of this season much more than Season 10. There are some weird things going on with Umbral Engrams, like some of them being powerful for what seems like no reason, and getting armor for the wrong class though. The other weapons are a bow, auto, pulse, and fusion. Not as appealing, but I've gotten to play with the auto in PvP, it's not too bad there. There are also some new perks available, like Unrelenting, Sympathetic Arsenal, and Killing Wind. They're not damage perks though, so we'll need to see how they work themselves into the meta after more people start to get weapon rolls and as we move forward into deeper seasons for a weapon retirement. Bungie seems to be making a move away from introducing damage perks, and I do wonder if we'll eventually see a shift out of damage perks completely, which would then potentially get Bungie to nerf health values on enemies due to a lack of bonus damage getting output. We'll see. What really boosted my first impressions was the unexpected release of a new dungeon called Prophecy. This dungeon was a great first time experience, much like the other two, although I do think I liked it more than Pit of Heresy. However, my first impression of Pit of Heresy was just sort of a stomp through it, whereas with Prophecy, I was at one point over 30 levels underneath the enemies in the room. This made for a very intense first clear, eliciting feelings of a day one raid experience. I would recommend going in slightly under leveled to get a similar experience if you want it. It starts at 1040 and ends at 1060, so I'd recommend like 1035 before entering. My guide is in the works and I will be doing another solo flawless guide with non-meta weapons as well. However, it was pointed out that apparently the dungeon is only around for the duration of Season 11, which surprised me. Bungie ended up posting on Reddit saying that due to some under the hood changes as to how some activities function in Season 12, that the dungeon would be removed for Season 12, but they will be attempting to place it back into the game as soon as possible after that. Disappointing, absolutely, but uh, uh, okay, it's all right. Okay, all right. Minor dungeon mechanic spoilers coming up, just in case uh, you can just skip forward if you don't want to hear them. Going back and looking at the run that I did, the encounters all revolve around the same mechanic, which is very normal for Destiny, but the encounters didn't change a ton despite that. Compare that to Shattered Throne and Pit of Heresy, which had themes and mechanics throughout, but changed up their encounters a little bit. A lot of the awe of the dungeon came from its initial challenge and environmental reveals, which to reiterate were fantastic. I did enjoy the damage phase of the final boss though, big consecrated mind vibes from it with a bit more flair, but if there was just a little bit of a tweak to each encounter, I think that would have really sealed the deal. All of the encounters are just dunk light motes into light beams and dunk dark motes into dark beams just in different areas. The seasonal exotic is Wither Horde, a grenade launcher that leaves a pool of blight on the ground, dealing damage to enemies within it. If you hit a target directly and they die to the damage of Wither Horde, a blight will drop where they died. I enjoyed this weapon for the new public event and any spaces where there are a ton of enemies to kill, certain strikes, stuff like that. Anarchy still takes the cake when it comes to single target damage if we're just comparing to Wither Horde, but with the introduction of Dark Drinker Light, aka Falling Guillotine, you have some mountaintop anarchy type damage capabilities that I hope to explore during the season. Obviously, this would be limited to bosses that you can actually use a sword on, so Garden of Salvation is going to have to take a back seat on this one. While this first week was not too shabby, all things considered, a lot of it for me was filled with the fascination of seeing my power level go up and grinding powerfuls and pinnacles. Although I know not everyone is happy about having to grind the same old things for yet another season just to level up. My main concern is the momentum going into week two, week three, and beyond, in that I'm not sure if this season will be able to keep that momentum up week over week. 
The dungeon is free to play. You don't need the season for that. You don't need the season for the public event. You don't need the season for Moments of Triumphs, Sources of Heroes. Free to play players, not doing too bad here. Otherwise, this season didn't really launch with the same level of updates as Season 10 did. GM Nightfalls got their loot buffed a little bit, Trials loot got adjusted, but the only major sandbox changes were nerfs to reload speed perks, the buffs to dynamic sway reduction, pulse monitor, hip fire grip, and sneak bow, the 30% buff to slug shotgun damage in PvE, and the 10% bow PvE buff against minor enemies. The reload speed perk nerfs are unfortunate, but it looks like Bungie is trying to even the playing field in the perk world, which I don't really think is a bad thing. However, reload speed perks are still good. You just need to put in a little more effort to make them as good as they used to be. Oh, also, the Trinity Ghoul Catalyst, which is a world drop, I got mine from a strike, is amazing and turns the weapon into one of the best ad clearing weapons in the entire game. Speaking of Trials in that previous paragraph, Trials launched in a bugged state where those who went flawless couldn't actually get to the lighthouse and Bungie had to shut down Trials until the bug gets fixed. Little unfortunate there. Also, it appears that new accounts will have to complete a Trials quest involving them to hit level 1010, get 50 kills in elimination, and hit Valor rank legend according to some screenshots and data mined information from earlier. This is likely a new effort by Bungie to curb the amount of cheaters and hackers making new accounts to enter trials quickly. A good short-term solution considering most veteran players probably have at least one Valor reset on their accounts. Speaking of PvP, Bungie has removed skill-based matchmaking from everything except Elimination, Survival, and Survival Freelance. Trials matchmaking will still work the same way. This was done to shorten queue times, improve connection quality, among other reasons. I suspect people will be very split on this decision, one that we can maybe talk about another time. And I think that about wraps up First Impressions. I think we started much better than we started Season 10 for sure, but I do ultimately feel like this season will end up feeling a fair amount like Season 10 for the most part. However, the increased player agency in your rewards already give this season a boost over Season 10. How much of one, I would say, varies from player to player. I said I was going into this season with the lowest expectations for a new batch of Destiny content ever. Season 11's first few days did exceed expectations, but again, I'm wondering if that momentum will carry forward throughout the season. We do have moments of triumph and sources of heroes later in the season, which will help the grinders out there, but story-wise, it's still kind of up in the air. For a season that was developed mostly remotely by Bungie, I think we're hanging in there. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.